Okay. Uh, this one is so important in that diploma. And the reason why is because you use it a lot. It's not like you your associative commutative where you don't you don't ever write you don't write it out. You don't write it out on the side. You have to use an insight problem to get the right answer. Associative commutative, you may be able to do in your head, but this you have to show on paper because you have to show your answer later on. So this is something that's super, super important. So the first thing you maybe have in your notebook, maybe not, I don't know, is what the distributed property looks like. Is this what you were talking about before? Yeah, that's all okay. that. All right, so now if you don't have one, get one of them written down, whether you like the ones with the numbers or you like the ones with the letters. Get something written down so you can see what the distributed property is doing. Okay, good. If you have both of them, great. Uh, and I'm going to talk about them so you see. Now, yesterday I had some stories to try to help you remember those, and I have something for this too to help you remember. Okay. Now most of the time, when you have distributed property, actually all the time, there's going to be parentheses. There's going to be parentheses when you have distributed property. There's no get to the top that. There's always some parentheses. Let's go ahead. So pick one, you don't have to rate both, you decide which one you like better so that you can understand. A lot of people like the ones with those numbers because that's what you'll see later on. Alright, so for distributed property, it's like inside of there, there's usually two numbers or a number and a letter. Now some of you, if you would see this, how would you solve it? You'd probably do four plus two times three. How many would do that if they were given this problem? Because I would. And I, if you would see that in the future, I hope that's how you would do it. But here's the deal. Sometimes we're going to be given a distributive property something like this, and we can't, we can't solve it. Can we take 8 plus 6? We can't do that. So that's why we have to use the distributive property to help us start to solve this stuff. Like I said, if you see something like this, you would take 6 plus, or 4 plus 2 to 6, 18, but if there's a letter inside those parentheses, you can't do that because they're not going to tell you what it is. So that's why we have to get the hang of using the distributive property. Now, what is it? Now, what's that? This way, I'm not doing it. Now, what is the distributed property is what I was going to ask. Now, take a look. You can see here 3 times 4 plus 3 times 2. What you're going to do is you're going to take this one in front. You're going to take it times 4. You're going to keep the sign. And you're going to take 3 and times it by 2. And you're going to keep the sign. Okay? And that's it. That's as far as you can go. You can't go any farther. You can't solve. Land it. So, like, how did you use the A? I just made this up. Oh. I'll show you how that works in a second. Okay? I'll show you how that works. Let's do a little practice. Let's do a little practice. So here's one. Yeah. I'll show you in a second. I'll show you in a second. Okay. So this is the problem. Now today we're not going to solve it like we normally solve. We're going to do everything distributed properly. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, and it's always going to be multiplication based, so you don't have to guess what it is. It's always multiplication. So the first thing I'm going to do is. Take a color, write this in your notebook. If you don't have any examples in your notebook, you better get one in it. So it's 8 times is 3 plus 1. This is how today I want you to solve these because we just got to get in the hang of it. You'll take your number in front and you take it times 3. Okay, it's always multiply. Then you're going to take your sign here and you're going to drop it down. Just get, it's going to come along with the problem. Because we have to know what to do to these things. Yeah. So you did this one? That's fine. I'll make up some more. Then what are you going to do? You have to take 8 times your 1 then. Now, if you have something like this, then you can start to solve. So what's 8 times 3 is 24, plus whatever your 8 times 1 is. There you go. It's a different way to solve these problems. You've been taught all the time to do it in the first, 
and then multiply with this is just a different way. Now let's do another one that you don't have in your in your notebook. Okay. That's the other theory. Okay, so let's do six on the outside and three minus one on the inside. Now instead of doing it like you normally do, do the distributive property. Write out, write your steps out. Especially if you don't have an example in your notebook, you better get one in there. And maybe by the time, pretty soon, you're going to know in your head what to do. You're going to say, okay, well, 6 times 3 is 18, minus 6 times 1 is 6. Maybe this is how you're plus. Maybe you didn't write it out like this. That's okay. You don't have to. If you can go from here to here, that's great. Hey, so is that, is that a minus or is that a negative sign? Um, inside is a subtraction sign for now. Because, like, I got both of these because this is 5 by 6. Okay, so I'll, so I'll talk about that too. There's different ways you can do it. There's two different ways you can do it. I'll show you both ways, okay? She was probably telling you one way, but there's also a second. I can show you that too. It'll probably make it easier. Maybe you'll understand the other way better. Okay, so how are we doing so far? Okay, so let's try one with a negative, kind of like what Peyton talked about. So if we look something like this. Uh, let's, yeah, we'll do it like that. Okay, so there's two ways you can do it. And I'm going to show you uh, probably the way you didn't see it in class with her. And we have to remember your negative rules here, too. Like, if you multiply a negative and a positive, what does it make? When you multiply a positive and a negative, what does it make? When you add a positive and a negative, you have to remember those rules. So here's an example of what we can talk about. So I'm going to take negative 2 times 3. And I'm going to bring down my subtraction sign. And then I'm going to take negative 2 times 2, which would be a negative 4. Oops, maybe I should write it all off real quick. I'm sorry. Like that. Okay, so this is your first part, which is here. This is your second part, which is those two. And there's your sign. Now start to solve for it. This would be negative 6 minus negative 4. Now what's the problem here? There's two negatives, so it'll be positive. Okay, so remember our rule? What's our rule? We can change. And it would be, uh, let's see, negative 2. Negative 2. Negative two. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another way, which is a shortcut way, and that's what Mrs. Hunt was talking about, the shortcut way. I'll do the shortcut way. So, what is negative 2? That's just 3 minus 2, right? So, here's the shortcut way. So you would start with taking this times this, okay? And then you would take, um, instead of dropping the sign down, you would take this as a negative 2 and this as a negative 2. And that would give you 4. This would give you negative 6. And then you would add those two. That's what she was doing as a shortcut, okay? But if you would rather write it out so you can see, you can write it out. And I'll do another example. So let's do another example of that for you guys. So number three, and number three, negative three, and then four minus one. Okay? So here's what you can do. Great question. I have a question. Uh, yeah, go. About if there's negative numbers, that means you need to keep taking three. Sometimes, not all the time. And I can show you when not all the time. Okay? This would be an example of yes. So if the first number is a negative, then that one is only going to not necessarily because what this is. It could be like this, then it would be, then it would be a positive one. Yeah. What I have like this. Okay, so first of all, you're going to take negative 3 times 4. I'm not going to do the shortcut way. I'm going to drop down my sign. Then I'm going to take negative 3 times 1. That's what it would look like. So this would be negative 12 minus negative 3. This is the keychain chain one. Negative nine, I believe. Okay? So how are we doing? Are we kind of catching on a little bit? These are the hardest ones. The ones that have a negative in the front and a subtraction are the hardest ones. So let's try one with a positive in the middle now. 
So I have negative 2 and then 8 plus 1. Okay, so it'll be negative 2 times 8 plus negative 2 times 1. This is not a key change in grade. Okay? It's be negative 16 plus negative 2. And then it'll be negative 18. So you have to remember your rules. If you don't remember your rules, you're going to get in trouble. You have to remember your rules. That's why this is so important. I've talked about that to over here. So how are we doing? So far so good? Okay, so let's add a letter in now. Because technically that's what's the biggest deal. You have to know how to use a letter. Alright, so let's do three parentheses x plus six. So now, like I said before, we can't do regular stuff. We have to use a stupid property because we don't know what x is. Now, does anybody remember my rule for the only variable? Have I ever talked about this before? Yes. There's a lonely variable, which means, which means there's no number in the front at a 1 every single time, so you don't forget. So I'm going to put a 1 there. There's a lonely variable at a 1. Now I'm going to do my distributed property just like what I was doing. Now, here's the thing. Don't even worry about the x. We're going to worry about the number that's in front of the x. So if I take this times this, what is it going to give me? It's going to be three x's. That x is just going to come along for the ride. And I'm going to bring my sign down. Three times six is 18. That's it. That's as far as I can go. That's it. The end. You cannot add it together. What's that? Yep. Yep. Multiplying is all you do. Yes, Peyton. So you don't plus them because it's the x? Yes, you can't plus them together because of the x. You are correct. Because this could be a number. Well, it could be 3, x could be 2. If I would add 18, 18 to that, that would be, it would be totally a different answer. So I can't add them together. All right, you want to try one by yourself? Try this one. Try this one. Okay, try and distribute a property with 10. Anybody want to share what they got? Anybody want to give it a whirl and share? Elliot, what'd you get? 12x minus 24. 12x minus 24. Oop, don't forget the x. Okay. I'm going to give you another one. Good job. Good job. Do this one. I'm going to give you a negative now in here, so be careful. It's going to be negative 4 parentheses 1x plus 6. Careful with the negative. If you're not sure, take your best guess. It's okay to be wrong. Question can or answer? All right, can you want to give it a whirl? Yeah. Okay, what do you got? Negative 4x plus negative 24. That's an answer. Yes, I would also take this as an answer. If you have that, I would take that as an answer as well. They mean the same thing. Most of you probably have that though. That's fine. Great. I would take both of them. Nice job. Okay. Uh, the thing about it is though, like an algebra one is simple as possible, so a lot of times like they weren't just like this, but I will take that for today, just a practice. Uh, let me give you this one. Um, that's okay. That's okay. That's why we're redoing it, right? We're re talking about it.
make sure that you have it in the smallest possible format. Okay? Hope you know what I mean by that because I haven't talked about it before. I hope you put a one with your X, count only variable. Are you ready to give it a whirl, anybody? Katie, what do you got? Negative 5x minus negative 30. Okay, this is what I mean. This is correct, but what can I do to make it as small as possible? What can I do, Brayden? What can I do? Do the subtraction. I can do this, right? Because it's keep, change, change. So technically for this one, I for sure would want to see this. Probably. This is not wrong. But this is the smallest possible. Because when we simplify, we want to make it as small as possible. So this is what I want to see. This is, like I said, this is not long. But I want you to change it to this. Okay? Um, I'd probably write you a big note on there. Maybe like half off or something. A big note that says it's in like circle, like change this. Because really, this looks unnatural anyway. Like having a negative and a subtraction just looks weird. So changing it makes it look a little nicer a little later. And it'll make it easier for you later on. Yep. Yeah, so like, since 30 was like negative 30, it's okay to like put the addition sign in front of it. So. Well, this was a subtraction. Oh. Okay. Right? So, because he carried, he carried the sign down. And then he did negative 5 times 6, and he had a negative 30. Okay. So that's why there was a, yep, that's why. Dan, you got a question? Okay, you want another one like that? Yeah. Yes, let's do another one like that then. I'm running on the numbers to use. Negative 4, negative 2x minus 3. Try that one. You can do it. A lot of this, guys, is simple, easy math you can do in your head. So. Is that a question or answer game? Okay, one sec. That's it's pretty easy and actually kind of fun. What's your name? I hate to say the word, the F word is fun in, in our math class because I'll keep it free out. Alright, Dan, what is it? Um, two X. Did you multiply these two? Negative four times negative two? Oh. And we'll multiply them first. Two. Negative four times two. Not dividing, not dividing. Uh, multiplying, multiplying, two. multiplying. Two. That's okay, you're always multiplying. That's okay, Kate. Eight x plus twelve. Eight x could have been negative. You probably, some of you have probably had this. But this is what we want to see. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right, one more thing I want to show you. And I know your homework probably fractions there, but I'm not going to touch fractions today. I want to show you that one that looks like this. Okay, so what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, or commutative, they moved it around. Good try. Okay, so they put it on the back side. Some of us don't like that. Who doesn't like that? Who would like to see that number in front? You can move it. We can use that community of property and move it over. So if you'd rather move it like this, you you can do that. Because sometimes that gets confusing. Plan it. So if you were to do it like that, how would you do it? If I was to do it like this? Yeah. The same way. That's a good question. The same way. So I would just take 7 times my 3x, which would be 21, or 21x. And then subtract, and then 7 times 2 be 14. It's the same thing, only just on the opposite side. Okay? Yep. Good question. Good question. If you want to switch it around, you are more than welcome to do that. Don't think you uh, can. A little easier? I don't know. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, yeah, just practicing a little bit can make it easier. Do you have any others? Let's try one like this. Last one in your notebook. Last one in your notebook, okay? Can 
Notice this one has two variables. It doesn't matter. That's okay. Remember, they're just coming along for the right anyway. So be careful. Remember, you cannot combine these in the end. You cannot put them together in the end because they don't have the same variables. So don't put them together in the end. You can't because they don't have the same letter. Dane, you want to try to redeem yourself? Yeah. All right, let's see it. Negative 14 plus 6F. I believe that is correct. Yeah. Yay! Now you cannot put these together. So don't think you can add them together because these are not the same number. Not even close. Letter. Well, it goes with a number in there. Oh, yeah. Same letter, same number, same difference, right? Yeah, I have a worksheet today for you for homework. Uh, so, what, you can probably keep, if you want to keep it.